Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash, Supergirl, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, Batwoman, and a whole lot more. This is the CW art front, they just happened today. We've got some new scheduling, so some big changes for Supergirl, some new changes for Batwoman, who's coming to the CW, and lots of other stories to go through. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so the CW upfronts happen every year, and we always get the schedule as to what the full, as they say, or the autumn sort of schedule is for the shows, for the CW mainly. So, all these different scheduled written shows that are narratively based and so they announced today that Batwoman is going to be premiering on Sundays and I don't believe right now they've actually released actual dates for the episodes but just that Batwoman's going to be on Sunday it's going to be in Supergirl's time slot that was at 8 to 9 p.m. last year so this year so the finale is still the same next week this Sunday for Supergirl but that is when Batwoman's going to be, so be on the lookout for that, Batwoman's there. And they also release a new promo look, so like some photos from the set, because if you didn't know, they've been shooting Batwoman recently. Obviously, they're going to start getting it all ready over the summer, so they will return for shooting very soon. So Batwoman's going to be on Sunday, and that's going to be followed by Supergirl. So Supergirl is moving one hour later into the night on Sunday, and this is going to be a all superhero Sunday and I think because the CW are pushing so hard for Sundays to be a big thing obviously we've got Game of Thrones at the moment that's obviously taking a lot of the sort of bites and in America they have American football apparently that's a massive thing on Sundays so it's always hard for them and they only reintroduced Sundays recently and they put Supergirl on Sundays to try and sort of lead the bunch and sort of give them good ratings and I think with Batwoman tying in with Supergirl, I think that's a great I think that's a great pairing. I think that's really, really good. However, I'm a bit confused as to why Batwoman goes before Supergirl, because if you didn't know, the time slots depend on, you know, what type of rating the show's gonna get, but like how much they can include. So is Supergirl going to get darker? I was expecting Batwoman to be like in a later time slot because it's supposed to be like Arrow, it's supposed to be ground level kind of gritty, unlike Supergirl and The Flash that are sort of very super-powered, orientated. So, I'm a bit confused as to why Supergirl has moved to there, because that's quite a big change when you think of it. So, is Supergirl going to get darker? Is it going to be, you know, more realistic? Is it going to be a bit more brutal in terms of the battles? Certainly, last episode, we saw that a lot of blood actually was in it, maybe they're just testing, because I hadn't seen a lot of blood in Supergirl in the past, so I don't know, there could be big changes coming for Supergirl, I think that's very interesting to note down. And then Monday we have All American at 8 till 9, then we have Black Lightning 9 till 10, so staying the same, doesn't really matter. And so Tuesday, this is a big change, so The Flash is sticking to its normal time slot, The Flash has never moved because, you know, it's the CW's flagship show and everyone knows The Flash is on Tuesdays at 8, 7 central. That's always the thing. And so what's moved is Arrow is now on Tuesdays for its final season after The Flash. And I think this is a very good move because Arrow this season was on Monday with Legends. Yeah, not many people watched Arrow this season. And I think heading towards the finale, the final season, sorry. I think it's a really good idea to put it after The Flash because people will be watching The Flash and they'll be like, oh shit, Arrow's on next. Let's stay on, watch Arrow. This is the final season. They can sort of promote that so that they can get their viewer ratings back. And I think that's a great move for the CW. Also, we're going to quickly touch on Wednesday because Riverdale is in its normal time at 8, 7 central. And then we have Nancy Drew after. And that makes a lot of sense because that is similar to Riverdale because it's about a teen detective. And it's sort of like the same audience. So that makes a lot of sense. And I know a lot of you guys watch Riverdale. And then Thursday is Supernatural Legacies. And then Friday is Charmed in Dynasty. But I don't watch any of those shows. So... Very interesting to note down in regards to Nancy Drew coming after Riverdale, Arrow coming after The Flash, and Black Lightning staying where it is, and Batwoman coming before Supergirl, and Supergirl obviously changing its time slot. So, 
we don't actually have like any proper quotes from the CW upfronts, but we got a new description for the Batwoman show, so I'm going to read it out. They also released a new photo that you'll see on the screen right now. We see the Batman suit. Let's break that down in just a sec after we've gone through this description. So, Batwoman. Kate Kane, played by Ruby Rose, never planned to be Gotham's new vigilante. Three years after Batman mysteriously disappeared, Gotham is a city in despair. Without the Kate Crusader, the Gotham City Police Department was overrun and outgunned by criminal gangs. Enter Jacob Kane and his military-grade Crows private security, which now protects the city with omnipresent firepower and militia. Years before, Jacob's first wife and daughter were killed in the crossfire of Gotham crime. He sent his only surviving daughter, Kate Kane, away from Gotham for her safety. After a dishonorable discharge from military school and years of brutal survival training, Kate returns home when the Alice in Wonderland gang targets her father and his security firm by kidnapping his best crow officer, Sophie Moore. Although remarried to wealthy socialite Catherine Hamilton Kane, who bankrolls the crows, Jacob is still struggling with the family he lost, while keeping Kate, the daughter he still has, at a distance. But Kate is a woman who's done asking for permission. In order to help her family and her city, she'll have to become the one thing her father loathes, a dark knight vigilante. With the help of her compassionate stepsister, very much so like Supergirl, Mary, and the crafty Luke Fox, I'm guessing that's in relation to Lucius Fox, right? So the son of Wayne Enterprises, tech guru Lucius Fox, there we go. Kate Kane continues the legacy of her missing cousin, Bruce Wayne, as Batwoman. Still holding a flame for her ex-girlfriend Sophie, Katie uses everything in her power to combat the dark machinations of the psychotic Alice, who is always somewhere slipping between sane and insane. Armed with a passion for social justice and a flair for speaking her mind, Kate Kane slows through the shadow streets of Gotham as Batwoman, but don't call her a hero yet. In a city desperate for a saviour, she must first overcome her own demons before embracing the call to be Gotham's symbol of hope. So that's a long ass description, I was stumbling over my words nearly. And so what basically it teases is they're going to have a lot of the legacy sort of casting where it's going to be the characters that we know, like Lucius Fox, but it'll be like their sort of sons and, you know, people in relation to them, basically. So we have Lucius Fox's son playing in this part of the story, and then we have, obviously, her looking for the mystery of Bruce Wayne, why Bruce Wayne disappeared on our Earth, you know, it's Earth 1, so I'm guessing maybe this ties into what's happening in the crossover, because, you know, Crisis is going to have Batwoman in it. She's in the newspaper article since the timeline has changed and everything like that. So that's very, very exciting to hear because this seems very interesting and I'm very much so looking forward to it considering it's coming out on the same day as Supergirl. I find that very interesting and I can't wait for it. So let's quickly go through this photo that was released by the CW. So we have this and it seems like this is most likely Lucius Fox's son. I'm not 100% sure, but we see that this is Kate Kane in the Batcave, and you see Batman's suit behind it, and his suit looks really cool. I really like it, and this is obviously when he left, and he's left his suit, and she's just sort of taken over the Batcave. That's where she keeps her Batwoman gear. You can see the Batarangs on the wall, some of the gadgets that Batwoman, that Batman might have, but also Batwoman might have, and, well, we've seen some of those gadgets already, so... I'm very much so looking forward to seeing what Batwoman has to offer because I really liked her in Elseworlds and I'm very much so looking forward to what is actually going to be happening in the first season because they've already shot the pilot so that's interesting and it seems like they're going to intertwine Batman somehow into it in terms of her finding out the mystery as to why her cousin disappeared. And, you know, she's going to be becoming Batman, becoming the savior. I don't know if it's going to be in present day or in the past, but I'm guessing it's going to be present day. But they might do something like Arrow where they have flashbacks because, as it says, a lot of this is to do with her childhood and her father. So I'm guessing there is going to be some form of flashbacks 
or some form of storytelling that tells us about those sort of history of that family. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. So there's big changes coming to Supergirl. It's going to a later time slot. Is it going to be more dark or anything? Let me know. Also, are you excited for Batwoman? I know I am. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.